Welcome to the La Cis Bead Weaving Loom, a unique loom specifically designed for white pattern weaving as would be required for beaded bags. This loom is suitable for weaving any width up to 11 inches and any length up to 36 inches. The raised frame permits working flat on a table or at an angle with the front legs falling off the edge of the table. For ease of setup and weaving, the loom uses a continuous warp thread which is wrapped around the frame. As weaving proceeds, the warp is rotated so you are always working near the center of the frame. The parts that come with the loom are two long side frame bars with two pegs, one short end frame bar with two holes, one short end frame bar without holes, four wood knobs, one warp rotator rod, and one elastic band. In addition, you will need to supply two small wire hooks, such as small paper clips, warp thread, should be strong, smooth, fine, and not in twist. A bonded nylon thread is suggested. A one-quarter inch dowel by at least 24 inches. Beads for weaving. Small steel crochet hook. And a sheet of thin cardboard that fits within the frame. The loom is easily assembled by connecting the four bars together with the four wood knobs. Assemble so the end frame bars are vertical. Warp spacing will depend on the size of beads you will be using. For this loom, the spacer is made using your working beads. Using a 24 inch length of warp thread, string approximately 10 inches of beads, loop the thread through the first and last bead to keep them in place, tie a loop on each end of the thread so the total length is approximately 17 inches. With legs pointing down, adjust the end bar with the two holes so it is vertical with the edge holes facing outward. Feed the ends of the beaded strand through these end holes using a crochet hook or other device. Put a hook through the loop. Once you have the both hooks on, you're going to connect them to each other by an elastic band. Center the beads on the frame so they rest along the corner of the and warping consists of simply wrapping a continuous thread around the end frame bars, this thread falling between the spacer beads in sequence. This is easiest done by placing a thin rod through the center holes of the side frame members and then supporting this rod. The entire across. loom can then be rotated on this rod as you guide the thread. The number of warp threads must equal the number of beads in the widest row of your pattern. Thus, if there are 40 beads in the widest row, 43 warp threads will be required. The end warps will consist of two warp threads, while one warp thread will fall between each bead. Starting at one end, wrap a continuous thread around the end frame bars, tying the end of this thread to the first warp. So you have a tight loop. To demonstrate the end bowline knot using a heavier thread, make a loop in the stretch cord, an overhand loop, then go underneath that loop with the end of your thread, go around the stretch cord and back through the loop. And pull tight till you have a small loop and then put your crochet hook in that loop and slide it down, putting tension back into your cord. 
weave the first few rows close to the spacer where the threads are uniformly spaced. The beaded warp spacer can now be removed as your woven bead rows now control the spacing. Unhook the rubber band from the clips, take the clips off the end and pull the uh, spacer out, and the spacer can be used another day. Place the warp rotator rod in front of the two rows that you just did, weaving it in and out of the warp threads. Loosen the tension by rotating the end warp beams and then pull that strand of beads up to the middle of the frame. Tighten your warp again by rotating the end bars vertical. Okay. The beads are now in the center of the loom which is where you will be doing most of your weaving. Remove the warp spacer rod. Lay your thin sheet of cardboard on top of the lower layer so you can see what you're doing and this sheet will also serve to support your design cartoon placing it directly under the working threads. A two needle technique is highly recommended for your enjoyment of bead weaving as it eliminates the counting and pre-stringing of beads. It does require always beading in the same direction right to left if you're right handed. After each row, you need to rotate the loom accordingly and keep the active row near the center of the loom. Weaving with beads is unlike basic weaving. In bead weaving, there is a double weft thread, one thread going under all warp threads and the other going over all warp threads, both threads going through the single hole in each bead which falls between these warp threads. Weaving in this manner requires no shed all warp threads remaining parallel. Spacing is controlled not by any outside spacer, but by the beads themselves. Bead weaving is thus quite simple as you follow the child charted designs as in cross stitch and needlepoint. A long and short needle is suggested for bead weaving. These needles need to be blunt so you don't go th pierce the threads. You will use a threaded short needle for your lower weft thread and a threaded long needle for the upper weft thread. Pick up one or more beads with the short needle and pass them onto the thread. In working the border of this pattern, we're going to pick up two of the different color beads, enough to do the width of the border. With your finger, push these up between the warp threads, holding them in position so the long threaded needle can be placed through the holes in each bead above the warp thread, locking the beads in place. When you get to the end of the row, Rotate the loom 180 degrees and proceed with the next row. In working on the Lassie's bead loom, the location of the working area is easily accomplished by simply rotating the warp around the frame as the work proceeds. Suggestions to keep the needles in place and out of the way when not being used is suggested that a magnetic strip be placed on the side frame bar which will hold the non-working needles. Warp threads should be quite taut when weaving and relaxed when not weaving. Warp tension is easily controlled by rotating the end frame bars. When working with many colors, it is suggested that an index size card be used for each color or multiple colors. Place double sticky tape on the card and then dump your beads onto the card. They can then be easily picked up by the short lower weft needle as the design requires. My beads pop 